We need our artists to recognize their roles and I think the person that we have in Ava DuVernay and being willing to use her art to be a voice for our liberation is just so, so important and so powerful. My mind is, I think, um, I think Trayvon was our Emmett um, in terms of uh, a real activation around, uh, you know, an outrage that instigated action wasn't enough just to rage against it. You know, we organized against it and people protested and resisted and expressed dissent in different ways. And now we have a president, mm. and I believe say that, who um, is, I don't think, doing anything really new, and I think that's why it's so important to know our history, is just being louder about it and talking about it on Twitter. They're stopping people at the airports. You know, people who are in mid-air when the ban happens, landing and unable to, with a green card. With a green card, can't get in. And, you know, this has happened before. It's important for us to look at Japanese internment camps and try to figure out how do we get to the point where people were being interned? Like, what, what, it, what was the start of that? And the start of it was very similar to what happened yesterday, the ban and extreme vetting. You know, you look at something like, you know, this week we celebrated Angela Davis's birthday. You look at her, t her case in this. And um, we're not far off from private citizens being persecuted on a public level for what they believe in expressing dissent to their government. He's already doing it with tweets. The history of our black liberation movement, which began, as Angela says, from the moment that we were stolen from the shores of Africa, we resisted, right? So we can think about black mamas jumping off the sides of slave ships rather than submit to slavery. I mean, I think that it's more of a lessening thing than what do I say. I think that the, the film gave like a vocabulary to something we felt as young people and gave, um, you know, an in-depth background on something we felt and, and understand viscerally. We don't, we ain't naturally have the historical or like the factual breakdown of it, but we felt this has got to be put, set up. This can't just all be a coincidence. This got to be by somebody's design. That shit just feels, excuse me, stuff feels like that. Like, it's just, um, I might have you grab that song that I like, so be careful. She talking about this record called Fuck Donald Trump. She wanted me to say it on this song. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, the film um, connects dots and connects, you know, you might have an understanding of like, um, one of the issues, which was like the decades and the increase of incarceration through all of the decades, but to see that there was like lobbyists and a group like ALEC and then the political side of it, I think that for me, it just gives me more confidence in being, um, what's the word? I think just to be, you don't wanna, I think everybody got like a stigma on being a conspiracy theorist or being like, you know, one of them dudes that's watch the YouTube clip and start preaching. <laughs> I think that everybody that, especially from our generation, has encountered or felt it or dealt with it. So to watch the film, like I said, I think it vocabulary to something that we already felt but didn't necessarily know how to express it or understand why it was feeling like how it felt. Call out the corporations to fall, to call out the elected officials, to call out the lawyers and, and, and the cops, but to know that that we've all got a role to play and we've all got to stand up wherever we are because we're either contributing to it or we're standing against it. How do we see more of this working together that we see on this stage? And how do we see more of our leaders working in concert and not being so adversarial? They aren't. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I respond to that? Sure. And then, you know, I just want to make a point. Just recently, a couple, probably like five days ago, um, I, I got a few businesses on Crenshaw and Sloss right. in the actual strip mall right there. Right. And um, that's right. I wasn't, I wasn't bragging. I was, I was about to make a point. You can do some commercials. Melina's been doing them all night, so you do your commercials. Nah, so. That's what we need. That's what we need. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We can't just be marching and then go home and, and, and nobody putting together no money to buy nothing. It's all about the money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, the population of Los Angeles is 4.7 million 
million white, 4.2 Latino, and 800,000 black. A black man can't rent a room nowhere. Right. I can't rent a room because none of my people don't own no fucking home. Real shit. Real shit. I'm in the parking lot, the police pull me over. And they see me, what's up, Nipsey, woo, woo, start talking to me, run my name, I get let them do their procedure. And um, as they was getting ready to leave, they're like, yeah, bro, I just want to give you some, a heads up. The city attorney has your store as one of the top 10 game targets in LA. Woo. So I'm like, why is that, you know? And um, we just start talking. And I'm like, well, um, let me give you an example, bro. Number one, it's very, very hard to start a business and be successful. Especially if you don't come from business owners that have been successful. You know? So we already dealt with that. And we, and we, we dealt with that without no help from y'all. Number two, everybody that work at the store is from this area. And might, you know, if it wasn't for this, this store, might be a part of your problem. Yeah. So number three, you know, they doing a big development. They got a train getting built on Crenshaw. They got all type of stuff getting Dude. built. Only time it's a problem is when we doing it, why, what happened when they built the Shell gas station or Hungry Heroes or yeah. any one of these businesses? It's not a gang hangout. We got a similar interest as business owners. And Dua was just like, well, if you know, if the city attorney got to hear you speak, I'm sure their opinion would change. But uh, we don't get to speak. Yeah. We, we catch a case and they, they come shut our shit down and we dealt with reality. You know, we dealt with bills got to get paid, overhead still real. But we got our legitimate operations shut down based on tradition or based on how things are perceived to be. You know, but um, I forgot why I brought the point of this. <laughs> and Melina's right. There's so much uh, power in the hands of artists, and we need them badly, whether they are in rappers or filmmakers, because a huge piece of this propaganda that we're confronted with all the time is what rolls up into the law. They make us believe that we need to be afraid of each other. They make us believe that, that we are predators in our communities. And then I remember when those laws were being passed and how many people who look like us we're advocating for them and embracing them, not because we hate each other, but because we don't know. And so raising consciousness within our own community and raising the consciousness of those who would, who would be our friends outside of our community, it's critical for us to solve the problem. So from my, my vantage point, that's, I mean, this is one of the most meaningful pieces of film that I've seen in a very, very, very long time. And we need to show it everywhere to everybody and watch it over and over and over and over. Actually have robust conversation and dialogue about it is something that I think is really missing. So I thank you, Blackwood Alliance, especially Nick May, uh, who put this together. And I'm not just saying that because he's my brother. Um, like my real brother, not my brother. Like, there's our mama right there, brother. Um, but he really put this together because he observed the work that I do and really was interested in there being an intersection between um, that work and the community that he's working in and organizing in. And so I think those connections are important. But even more than that, it's not about what Hollywood can do. It's what the audience of these films demand of Hollywood. It's what we, the people, all they care about is dollars. And so that's different from what artists care about. The industry, the apparatus, as you call it, cares about box office, they care about blue screen, blue screen, blue ray, they care about streaming, they care about will audiences show up. So it's important for us to show up for the things that we care about and to voice our dissent about things that we dislike. And I think that when we think about mass incarceration in this moment, um, how the film begins by talking about slavery and talking about the 13th Amendment and being very intentional about saying that the 13th Amendment and the structure of prisons in this country was also intentional and then goes around 
kind of traces history and then ends with the Black Lives Matter moment, the piece of the Black liberation movement, I think is really kind of telling about where we are. So we need to understand that the over-criminalization, the mass criminalization of black people is directly connected with the murder of our folks at the hands of the police, right? So I wanna just, um, she's on my spirit right now, I wanna lift up the name of Waikisha Wilson. Um, who many folks know was killed on Easter Sunday last year in LAPD Metro Detention Center, arrested for a very, very minor crime, for an altercation, right? Winds up dead in this jail cell, right? So we need to understand that when Trump is talking about a national stop and frisk policy, what he's talking about is not only filling the jails, not only building more prisons, not only funding police at the expense of the things that actually make communities safe, like good jobs, education, um, mental health resources, arts programs, right? He's not only talking about doing that, but he's also talking about giving increased um, kind of uh, permission to police to assault and assail our folks in ways that um, create increased deaths in our community. Trevon Martin was astonishing, especially for, for, for all of us, but for those of us who have sons who look like them, mm. right. it, was, it was astonishing. Yeah. Black Lives Matters was a revelation for me because it represented young people stepping up and stepping out and stepping out front. The community had some issues about uh, the film. Uh, I remember reading some flack about why is this film coming out now? Uh, really? And, I didn't hear that. Uh, <laughs> there was, there was about, talk. What was it? The <laughs> Hillary. Oh, Hillary. Super Predator. <laughs> <laughs> remember that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, don't, you didn't hear it. Oh, uh, you did, uh, Cynthia. Melina, Nibs, anyone? Uh, what criticism that we talked about Hillary's? Um, uh, was it going to suppress the African American vote? Was it going to negatively impact the vote because we, you are now reminding people of the super predator comment and Hillary's involvement uh, with the 1994 crime movie? Can I say something? Oh, absolutely. I think that art doesn't have a political agenda. So I don't think that in the process of creating art or telling truth that the political calendar is on your, on your palate. I think you're thinking about your subject and you're thinking about executing whatever the intention of your uh, art is. I mean, we were the only ones who voted for Hillary, even though she wasn't voting for us. 54% of, uh, of white women, period. 54% of white women, period. One more time. 54%. Of white women voted for Donald Trump. I say to my friends, I have one of my gorgeous, beautiful friends, Julie Pierce, sitting right here, who worked with me on the 13th. She did all that music for the 13th and, and, and sound and did that music. I say to her, well, where, 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 what, what happened to your folks? Or where, where was the white women? You know what I mean? And I think what it's. What did she say? She was like, I, I voted the right way. I think I voted. <laughs> I think ultimately black people did come out and black women did come out and part of the political process was for us to be able to hold our politicians accountable, which is what I wanted for anyone that was gonna vote for Hillary, make sure that we were holding her accountable for what she did and said and how she changed. Mm -hmm. She came out, she apologized, she said that that time in her history was the bedrock of her new policies going forward, but no one heard that part. Mm -hmm. They only wanted to stay when she said super predator one time. But I wanted to hear what she said in reverse. Now, I thought I think our choices were very limited. You had yes. this, and you had. I mean, what, you want to, what are you going to do? But black folks chose overwhelmingly with numbers, and there's proof for it. The lesser of the two. And, um, and whether you, you know, the lesser of the two in terms of, you know, who was really an advocate for African American community from start to finish. Neither of them in a robust, meaningful, deeply integrated way, were always for it. They both had said things at different times that were against and worked against our very humanity. One was trying to correct it, and one was trying to continue with this very racist, 
oppressive agenda, and it was really clear, I think, in the doc, what one, where one was heading and where the other was heading. I don't know much more I could have done than juxtapose Trump's rhetoric at his rallies with actual beatings and uh, from the 60s, like that montage. Yeah, that it took every bit of my filmmaking, any power that you have as a filmmaker, to put that piece together, to try to say one, one month before the election, look, look at this, please just look at it. Nothing she could have said compared to what that was. And yet, you know, it, it, still, it still wasn't enough. Ultimately, there was nothing that I was gonna do that was gonna change it. But I think that telling the truth as I know it is something that you have to do regardless. And so that was my quest. There are a whole lot of us who've been there for a long time and we're not going anywhere. But as a community, learning to welcome, work with, support, not judge, because we're not going to be in alignment every second of the day in terms of how we do what we do. But we can give each other space to move forward. And from my perspective, the most um, encouraging thing I've seen in a very long time is the way that young people have stepped up and stepped out and are just disrupting, <laughs> demanding, and moving us all forward. So for the, the three of you on this, on this platform, I just want to say thank you for that. Different time than five years ago, than 10 years ago. I think now, for a lot of reasons, maybe we should re retry shit. Things that we failed, because I know our generation, we got, we got tired of trying, and, or even watching people try and it not working. So I think that even like culturally, it ain't no black uh, Panther groups, Black Lives Matter, just the closest thing to it. That used to be like a, a young person's outlet with their frustration, they're gonna be a part of the Black Panthers, they're gonna be a part of an organization. You got gangs, niggas just turned to, niggas just gang back. As a, as, a, as a resort of saying, fuck it. When you get tired of just trying to do right and being, you know, um, way down or feeling the gravity of like an uphill battle just to do right, people say fuck it. It's important for us to get involved in the storytelling as audiences and to understand the power of the audience. You know, it's not just all about the artist's whim, and it's not all just about the distributor putting it out. It's the audience, what they say, how they vibrate, what they respond to, and what they show up for again and again, that gets made again and again. And so, um, it's really important to do that, and it's really important to support independent artists as well, um, because we've shown up for many films and didn't get another one for another five years, right? Wow. Um, every time a black film does well, it, it makes front page news in the industry trades, like, wow, look at those hidden figures numbers. Yeah. Look at, you know, for whatever you think about hidden figures, the bottom line is the industry didn't think it was gonna do anything because it was about four black women. And so the fact that it doubles its numbers and it knocks Star Wars off the number one spot and it does all of these things, they look at it every single time like, how did that happen? But they don't remember the first best man. They don't remember Love Jones. They don't remember, like, it happens yes. every time. You know, you know it just ha they never learn. And so it's up to us to continue to show up and continue to make our voices heard. So uh, one of the other thing I'll say is the thing that's really interesting now is the traditional walls are collapsing in terms of what we as an audience has, have access to. You know, back in the day, Nipsey would have had to go to a traditional record company, hope that they gave him a deal, would be constrained by whenever they wanted him to put out something. He would have to be on a certain schedule. He'd have to wait for actual records to be pressed and sent to the to the record stores that would allow. Now the brother, he, he's you gonna go home tonight and make a song. We're gonna be out tomorrow. Most likely. Yeah. The ancestors and our predecessors have given us the answers. Just got to look back and pick out the weapons out of history and create create an arsenal. Knowledge. We need solid physical results. Right. It's time for our voice and our protest to match the physical work. We can't be scared to stand up, right? If you really are courageous, then you gotta be willing to not just stand up when somebody steps on your shoe, but you gotta stand up against a system that's trying to kill your people. That's courage.